Zombie Apocalypse. <laughs> Um, this week's video is different. I, um, I thought I'd mix it up. Instead of showing you got making a pipe, I've got a more close-up tutorial of hanging these flanges here. So this is a piece of 4-inch Shed 20 pipe and the video basically shows putting these flanges on. Maybe it'll help you out if you want like a few tips of how to hang these faster. Because I can make one of these in less than 10 minutes, something like that, a few minutes. It don't take too long, so hopefully you've got to pick up a few tips and yeah. Let's get to it. And apologies from now, the audio isn't going to be the best. I've got a mic on here, hopefully, hopefully you can hear me. If not, I'm going to have to dub over this um, in post. So, you take your pipe over to the vice, and then you need to level it off, is the first step. So, what I like to do, if you take a look at this, what I like to do is put my bubble with the pipe touching the line. I find that way there, you get a more accurate reading for when you bring it to center after. So here is touching the line on my left. So I use my pen to put a mark there. And then with your bolt holes, it can be any direction. So for habit, I do it this direction here. And then your next step, you wanna know what your face-to-face -face measurement is. So if you look at the measurement here, the face to face has to be 340 mil. So I'm adding 15 mil to make up the difference. And the way how I do that is with my um, chalk and steel rule. So you get the flange. The flanges I'm using here are DN100s, that's um, four inch, and the pressure it can hold is PN16. So I put my um, flanges on, temporarily hold it there, and I grab my steel rule chalk. And if you look down here, I pull it at the desired measurement. In this case here, it's 15 mil. And then I put a mark on the back of the flange here. Put a mark on the back of the flange here. And now I know that's how far the flange has to stick out in order to be hung properly. And I do the same for the other side. Pipe goes on. And then here's the second mark. Sometimes you may have to um, hang your flange even further, which is why the steel rule comes into hand. 30 mil you can hang it on, 20 mil, 10 mil. Anything smaller than that, you ain't really got room to, um, to weld. So yeah, 15 mil. Now for the next step. So I don't have um, flange pins, I use bolts. They work just as well. The checkers use bolts, so there's no issue with it. Well, that was a small lie. I do have flange pins, and I've got these lathed machined pieces. And um, the issue with these is some of the flanges come with different size bolt holes, so they don't always fit. And I always resort back to my um, normal bolts. So, and the flange pins, they they take too long, especially on small pieces. The amount of setup that you do to use them, you may as well quickly use the bolts. It takes me like two seconds to tack it together. So all the jobs I ever do, unless it's stated otherwise, is two holes tops. Now that refers to um, two bolt holes top, which keeps everything 90 degrees, as long as everything's um, two holes top. So now, I've got my level on it, and I'm gonna match these marks here. So the bolt holes have to be to the right. So, see how it's over to the right? And then if you, and if you look at the, the mark on the back, as well, it's lined up to the back. Now, what I see a lot of people doing is hanging the flanges, just sitting it on top. But what that does is leaves no gap at the top and a huge gap at the bottom. So I angle my pipes at an angle so I can put my first tack on the back and then that holds a nice gap at the top and then when I pull it forwards, it centers. And when I pull it forward, it centers the ready for the first one. Eyes everyone. First tap. Now I pull it up. And then that leaves a nice center gap all the way around. So it's touching the line on the right. Now the face of the flange has to touch 
the line on my right down here. So now you can just pull the flange out nice and easy. And then put, then put your second tack on. Just like that. Now your first flange at your first orientation is put on. Just gonna double check, line to the right. Line to the right, lovely. Now we can move on to the other side. Lining it up to my chalk mark on the back. If you um, look closer up here, you can see the gap that you make by sliding the flange. So if you were to leave it on, you'd have no gap, but sliding it at an angle puts a gap there. Watch your eyes, I'm gonna put the second tack on. Now I can pull the flange up and it locks that gap in. It's more important to do that on, say, bigger pipes. When you're dealing with 12 inch, 10 inch, 14 inch, stuff like that, the, the gaps get really bad. Here's an example that I was talking about. This is a 12 inch flange and you can see it's just sitting on the pipe and there's no gap on the top. And the size of the gap at the bottom would be a, a hard one, a really hard one run to do. The chances are you'd probably have to do two runs to fill that gap in. But if the top can only handle one run, you would end up getting undercut on the part at the bottom. Another alternative to, um, to this is basically putting tacks either on the pipe and sit in the flange on top of the tacks to um, make the gap better. Or you can put pieces of pipe or shims underneath it to open up the gap, keep it more consistent. By no means is this method foolproof because the gaps aren't perfect, but if you're the type of person to just sit the flange on and deal with the gaps later on when you're welding, it's a simple little technique that you can pick up, won't take any more extra effort and it would help save you a lot of time later on when it comes to welding. And then with one tack on you can adjust the pipes left and right in case it's moved while tacking. But yeah, ready for that second orientation. So this has to go out ever so slightly, but because this flange didn't go on perfect, I'm going to have to put a slight right angle on this one, a force to the right a little bit, while at the same time pulling the flange out. The more you, the more you do it, the more easier it gets and knowing how much you have to put on to spawn it to um, pull out. And another tap. There we go. Line to the right there, bolt hole to the right, lovely. So this is the first stage done. I'm just going to double check, make sure the overalls work is good. Bang on. Now we can flip it 90 degrees and level it off the other way. This way here, it's not crucially critical to have the bolt holes lined up to flip it exactly 90 degrees. But the better you get it, the more accurate your um, second leveling would be. You can see if the bubble here, it's over this direction. I always put marks on it just so I'm not having to remember anything and I can um, just go about working on autopilot. So now we need to level this flange here, off to the right, or the left, sorry. And um, I use like a, a dead full kind of hammer just so it's got a lot of force in it without damaging the face of the flange. And you just tap it. There we go. Now, this isn't entirely in the right exact spot because when you weld, the weld shrink and it pulls. So if I weld the bottom, it's gonna shrink and pull the flange over more. So I, 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 um, I level it off in a way where it, I can compensate for it. So 
it looks like I need to tack the top for it to fall over ever so slightly and then I'm going to do two tacks fast to minimise how much it pulls. There we go. Try not to breathe any of this stuff in, it's so not good for you. First flange done. Second flange is nearly perfect. So again, I will tack at the bottom and it's going to pull the level over ever so slightly and I'm going to tack the top fast. There we go, just like that, it's sorted. Had to hang two flanges. Before I go, I'll just show you quickly one way how you can check to um, see how good your work is. So, putting a square on here, lining up for the face. You can see the, how square the two flanges are to each other to the face of the flange. And then you've got your other square, and then you put it here. And I'd say that's quite good. I'm happy with that. That's one way of checking your square of it. But it just depends on where you work, whether you need to do that or not. And then, if you want to check the level of your two bolt holes, here's a, a tip that I've got. But you have to use a bench, that's the only problem. So you get your two bolt holes, your two bolts, sorry. Bring the pipe to the end of the table. That squares it off, makes it easier for you to check. Now you grab a steel rule. And what you're looking to do is line up the steel rule to the bottom of your two bolt holes, like this. Take a closer look at that. So right now, it's lined nice and perfectly straight up. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna look through the two bolt holes on top to make sure that the bottom of these two bolt holes to line up perfectly straight to the steel rule. It's looking pretty good. I don't know if you can see it. Basically, this bottom part here lines up with this bottom part here and that's a way you can check to make sure your two bolt holes are aligned to each other so guys if you liked what you see please leave a like and leave a comment down below and check in next week for another video just like this thanks for watching So guys, here's my camera man. <laughs> Useless. <laughs> I hope I hope you enjoyed it and see you in the next one. Bye. Zombie Apocalypse.